These straight edges are handy, but they don't automatically guarantee a good cut. Before you can use these effectively, you need to know how to handle the torch. Now, when you're preparing metal for weld joints, you'll sometimes need to bevel the edge. On metal that's 3 8 of an inch or less, you can just grind the bevel. On thicker metals, it's easier to cut the bevel with a torch. Bevels are generally around a 30 degree angle, and ideally, the top edge should be straight. You also want to leave a flat spot called a landing on the bottom edge. When you're welding, the top edge acts as a guide to keep the finished weld bead straight, and the landing helps carry the heat so you don't burn the bottom edges away. Before you start, you can draw a line as a guide. Angle the torch so you're not cutting through the bottom corner. Because a lot of the heat is just blowing off the edge, the cut speed will be slower. If the cut stops, let off the cutting jet lever, jump out to the edge, preheat, cut back to the line, and keep on going. Using a straight edge to bevel helps keep the torch steady. On long bevels, cut out to the edge, reposition yourself, cut back into the line, and go again. You'll probably get slag sticking to the bottom edge because of the slower travel speed, but it comes off easily. Another situation you'll run into is making a cut where you don't have an edge to start on, like making a cutout for a pipe to go through. Start inside the cutout and preheat a little more than you would on the edge. Ease the cutting jet lever on and start moving the tip. The slag will come up in the kerf until you're all the way through, then move up to the line and make the cut. By moving the tip on the start, the slag won't jump up and contaminate the tip. And if it does, take a few seconds to clean the tip. Occasionally, you'll get in the position where you need to save both the inside and outside pieces. So you'll have to start right on the cut line. Here again, preheat a little hotter, ease on the cutting jet, and move the tip. When you're all the way through, cut back just a little, then go on to make the cut. You're able to cut back through the slag because everything is still hot from preheating for the start. By cutting back a little, you'll have a relatively clean place to finish. If you leave that mess, when you come all the way around to finish, and the cutting jet hits the cold slag, it'll probably gouge into the sides of the curve. Now, cutting torches like this don't like to cut through two pieces of metal at one time. Sometimes you'll get lucky, but most of the time, the second piece won't get hot enough, stopping the cutting jet from getting through, and the slag comes back up in the curve. The best you can do is to angle the torch and wallow through the top piece blowing out the slag until you can preheat the bottom one. And this is never pretty. When you're through the first piece and preheating the second one, you need to be careful the tip doesn't get so hot that it melts. Besides cutting flat bar or plate, sooner or later you want to cut some solid round stock or rebar. These don't have an edge to start on and keep in mind how thick this is so you can adjust the oxygen pressure to get all the way through. Get the metal good and hot, rotate the tip back a little, push the cutting jet lever, rotate the tip straight up and down, and cut it off.